Well, thanks for the opportunity. My name's Todd Thompson, and I grew up in Sepulpa. My dad was a highway patrolman for 30, year, 30 years, uh, serving Creek County and Turner Turnpike. My mom's been an executive assistant since 1969. And while I grew up, I was uh, an athlete and had the opportunity to go play football at OU, won a national championship in 85, and was a punter and kicker for four years for Coach Switzer. And best thing that happened to me is I got involved in uh, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. After I graduated from OU, had the opportunity to work for FCA, and then all of a sudden this opportunity to run for the state house came up and I served 12 years in the house. And while in, while in the house, I was the utility chair and uh, on the Energy and Natural Resources Committee, and it really gave me a first-hand perspective of the Corporation Commission, what it does and the broad uh, scope that it has, and uh, really gave me an interest in the Corporation Commission. In 2021, Oklahoma experienced an unusual but predicted cold weather event. The fallout from that storm left Oklahomans holding the bag for over $5 billion in costs incurred in a matter of hours due to purchasing off the high-priced gas spot market. If elected, what will you do to prevent something like this from happening again? Well, I mean, we live in Oklahoma, so we have to be ready for continual weather changes, and that was unique, of course. But I think the thing that I would do as a commissioner is really try to bring all parties uh, that are involved in the process of providing our energy um, during those times uh, to find the solution from them. Uh, I think there's a solution that can be had using the influence of the office to say we cannot let this happen again. We have to be more prepared and understanding that uh, some of the mitigating uh, measures that we take may cost a little bit of money up, up front. Uh, so we have to weigh that and evaluate that. But I think that if you bring everybody together and really set an expectation that we won't be in this situation again, that you can find solutions from that group. What will your approach be for determining if a requested rate increase is justified? And what factors will you consider in your decision-making process? Well, so I would say that as a, uh, as a member of the State House for 12 years, I think the one thing I, I hope I exemplified was a willingness to listen first and to really evaluate each, each and every situation individually and not make just a, a general judgment. And I think that's the thing that you would have to begin with in this, in this setting. And then I go back to being a, a father of four kids that, you know, I was on a single income whenever I uh, was in ministry and I know how important rates are. And you just have to evaluate is, is the rate increase justified um, because it makes the system better or is it, is it unnecessary? And, and keep it in mind that we need to maintain the best rates possible for all Oklahomans. We continue to see efforts to build new power plants, invest in alternative energy, and shore up the utility grid. How will you approach the cost investments needed for these projects to ensure fairness for ratepayers? Yeah, obviously uh, capital improvements uh, are gonna cost and uh, sometimes not making those improvements could cost us more in the long run. So you have to evaluate that. But my, I have two boys, I have twin boys, and they both, unlike their dad, love cars and are really good at working on cars, but they'd like to buy these uh, fixer-uppers. And uh, they wanna do all kinds of stuff, modifications to them to make them cooler. And I always tell them, listen, I don't care, tomorrow morning whenever you get up to go to work, is it gonna run better? And really that's kind of my philosophy on this is, um, are these investments going to make the system more reliable, um, more resilient, and make, make the service better? And, and really I think that's where we have to start as the beginning point. 